It's crazy when evidence of climate change comes knocking at your door one day, but that's exactly what happened to us in South Lake Tahoe. Smoke from the Dixie Fire came pouring into the city, putting the air quality into the danger zone and pretty much chasing us out of town. It was crazy because the day before the weather was beautiful and we were enjoying the views, never expecting that our time in Lake Tahoe would be cut short by all the smoke. This is how it went down. Welcome to Lake Tahoe. We arrived in Lake Tahoe after exploring Yosemite National Park for three days. We were really looking forward to some lake time and we started our trip with Sand Harbor Beach, which was packed with people enjoying the water. So right now, we're in Sand Harbor Beach. This is a Nevada State Park on the eastern side of Lake Tahoe. We chose to walk the half mile trail here, reading the placards and learning that the Wasso Native Americans used to call this lake big water in a high place. So the Native Americans that used to live in this area called this lake high water because of its high elevation and also sacred waters just because when you look around it is quite special. Amazingly this lake is over 1600 feet deep. That means that if you put the Empire State Building inside the lake it would be completely covered with over 150 feet to spare. One thing that's going on with Lake Tahoe though is that every year the water is getting cloudier and cloudier because of increased sediment and increased pollution into the lake. Uh, back in the 1860s the water was clear up to over 100 feet but now it's only clear up to 60 to 70 feet. So. They're working on improving the clarity of the water now. Catching a glimpse of the sunset as we headed back to the hotel, this lake really did seem sacred. A place that sparkles in the sunlight. A place that should be protected. The next day we headed to Emerald Bay State Park and these views were some of our favorites. Some of the best views of the bay are right here on the side of the road at this turnout. And in the center here you have the Net Island. Super cute and makes for even a better view. Now because traffic was bad and the parking lot was full at Vikings Home, we decided to hike the Bayview Trail instead. So today we're going to take Cascade Falls because we love waterfalls and we love chasing them. Now it's only supposed to be a 0.7 mile hike and seeing as to how I'm wearing sandals, let's hope I can get through it just fine. It's supposed to have waterfalls and great views of Emerald Bay. So let's go check it out. So I keep saying we're not hikers, but here we are again on another hiking trail. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm proving myself to be a liar. But we really do enjoy waterfalls. We'll do a lot to go see a waterfall. So I'm looking forward to see what these Cascade Falls are like. This is what Cascade Falls looks like. So when it comes to waterfalls in a very dry, drought-ridden environment like California, you don't always win. Nonetheless, the lake views are amazing. Now Cascade Falls feeds into Cascade Lake, which you see right here. And then the lake in the background is Lake Tahoe. So here you have the beautiful double lake view. 
simply stunning. Now, although Cascade Falls is just a trickle today in August, I imagine in the spring, in the early summer, it's full of water and quite lovely to see. So depending on the season, it could be quite spectacular to come out and hike this trail. It was an easy 30 minute walk in, but just seeing both lakes side by side today, it's worth the effort for sure. It is slippery. Yeah. So in general, it can be easy to lose traction here. David's doing this in tennis shoes. I'm doing it in sandals. And we're both slipping a little bit. Naturally, wearing real athletic shoes would be better. But it is totally doable. And some Tevas as well. So now we're at the beach at D.L. Bliss State Park. And what a great name for a park. It really is blissful here. The view's amazing. They say the water is extremely cold. So let's go test it out. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way I'm putting my whole body in that. Thailand's spoiled me, so cold water is just not my thing. The beauty of the water kept calling me though, so I decided to give it another try. The water here is really clear though. It's like glass. Woo! It is super cold. You can hear how windy it is, and this water is extremely cold. Let's see if I can get in there. Wish me luck, y'all. Go, 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 go. Don't turn it back. Go, 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 go. Jump, jump on in. Jump on in. <laughs> Kendra braved the freezing waters of the Tahoe. She's out there swimming. Was it really cold? Man, that will wake you up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was refreshing though. So the very cold waters of Lake Tahoe feel like snow, but it's very refreshing and it will kind of invigorate you. So if you like that chilly, invigorating swim, this is a place for you. Uh -huh. And if not, you can just enjoy the views. Uh -huh. Gotcha. All right, David's going to try to go in this icy water with all his clothes on like a crazy man. <laughs> Trying to be like me. I can't walk in it. I got to jump in it. Go for it. <laughs> you did. We loved swimming in Lake Tahoe's chilly waters, and the next day we planned on hiking down to Viking's home and taking a kayak over to the Phanet Island. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned. We opened the curtains to find this. Overnight, the sky is completely cloudy, and air quality is really, really bad. Like they encourage you to wear a mask, not for coronavirus this time, but for the smoke that's coming off of the Dixie Fire. The Dixie Fire is like four hours away and we still have so much smoke. Now we were supposed to go to Lassen Volcanic Park, but the Dixie Fire is like right by that. So I think we might cancel the hotel and come up with a new plan. And we were going to go walk Lake Tahoe, but they say you should stay indoors because the smoke is so bad today. And you thought 2021 was going to be a little bit easier than 2020. And it's not. <laughs> and we're going to go down to the uh, Grand Canyon instead. Air quality is supposed to be good there in Blackstaff. That's the current plan. We really live in day by day these days. We left South Lake Tahoe on August 2nd because of the air quality. 
but on August 30th, the whole city of South Lake Tahoe had to be evacuated due to the Caldor fire. Luckily, the evacuation has been lifted and people could go back to their homes. But we can't just go back to normal. We must do something to change this never-ending cycle of natural disasters. In the description box below, I've linked an article on 101 ways you can fight climate change that really helps you start small with things you can do as an individual and then expand to what you can do for your city and your community. You've seen how beautiful Lake Tahoe is and you already know how precious this planet is. So please do what you can to take care of it. So please share this article and this video so we can work together to end this climate crisis and save our homes, our forests, and our beautiful lakes. Next week, we'll be taking you to the Grand Canyon. So make sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell to get notified about when we post again. Now that you know about Lake Tahoe, you should also check out our videos on Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. These places are great to add to your California vacation. Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram to continue the conversation and to see where in the world we are now.